All right, good morning. It's a sunny Sunday, isn't this great? Only in California, we love it. Um, we're going to praise God together for that, for many other things. Uh, this time together is to worship Him, uh, to draw close to Him through His Word, and all those good things. So let's start by standing, and our good friend Alejandro Garcia, a.k.a. Alex, is going to pray for us this morning. All right, thank you, Wayne. Father God, thank you for this beautiful morning. Thank you for this beautiful church, these brothers and sisters. Help us, Lord, just rest in your presence. Help us just uh, nurture our hearts, our spirit, with your word, with your wisdom. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Help us leave the world outside, the worries, the fear. Help us just trust in you and rest in the love that you have for us. As we worship you, as we listen to your word, help us remind how much you love us and all the promises you have for us. And as we walk out this building later today, help us stay in your presence yes. through the day, through the week. Yes. In the holy and precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 If you'd continue standing and join us, we're going to sing together a song for a call to worship. The song's a declaration of faith that God will come near to us. It's a prayer that God's spirit would fill this place. Chains be broken.
let your glory fall as you respond to us. Spirit and rain, flood into our thirsty hearts again. This is a reading from Lamentations 3:22 to 26. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning, great is, thy, is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore, therefore I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. Thank you for your great and awesome faithfulness, Lord. You are faithful even when we are not. We praise you and we thank you for that this morning. Amen. All right, go ahead and take a seat. Good to see you. Uh, my name is Wayne, if I haven't met you yet, and I have a few announcements for you. If there are any kids in here, first through fifth grade, you can go out with Miss Carly right there. She's going to lead them downstairs. Thank you, Carly and teachers, for blessing our kids. Yeah. 
Sixth or twelfth graders, you can hang out with us today, and we're glad to have you. All right, right, everybody, come on. Yeah, all right, all right. So I want to let you know um, if you haven't filled out a Connect card ever, or if you're new here, that's a great way for you to get connected with us. It's also a great way for you to share a prayer request, uh, let us know a next step, uh, give us feedback, and so forth. It's right there. It's in the seat back in front of you. And um, what else is that good for? It's also good to sign up for the weekly news so that you know what's going on around here and how to plug in. Uh, so fill that out. Put in the uh, welcome counter basket. Welcome counter is back there outside. And um, I also want you to know about a bulletin. If you don't have a bulletin, raise your hand high. And we're going to get one to you. This is going to help you track along with the message, uh, fill in the fill-ins. And we're going to fill them all in this Sunday. <laughs> all right. That's our promise to you. <laughs> And uh, it has a bunch of information about uh, some of the things I'm going to tell you about. Let me tell you about a few things uh, this morning, and I'm going to go in chronological order for you, all right? So today, uh, if you have not yet joined a small group or a smaller group, we have large groups, we have small groups. These are groups that meet during the week. This is the place for you. I mean, this is a place for us to get together, get to know each other better, and wrestle with the things of God, get in his word, uh, build friendships together share and encourage each other, pray for each other. If you're not yet in a group, today is the day to check it out. We have a whole list for you right here. Uh, it's on the welcome counter. Uh, find a group, just go once, try it out, see how it goes. And if it's just not a good fit, try another group until you find your group. We have a lot of varieties for you. Um, so do that today. All right. And then tomorrow, um, I have a quote for you from the man uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, and it says this, injustice anywhere, do you know this one? Yeah, is a threat to justice everywhere. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The guy had a way with words. He was a gift. He was a powerful uh, man of God. And uh, tomorrow night, the Micah 6-8 group is going to meet at 7 p.m. in Bergeson Hall. And we're going to look at his letter from Birmingham Jail, uh, from which we took that quote, and uh, discuss justice issues today. So again, that's tomorrow night, 7 p.m. On, on MLK Day. And then uh, Monday is going to pass, and then Tuesday. And then by the time you get to Wednesday, about 11.30 a.m., you're going to be hungry. And so we have our monthly lunch bunch. Come to that. Uh, good food, fellowship, hang out with us. That's 11.30 a.m. on Wednesday. It's down the hall. And sign up at the welcome counter, or you can call the office to let us know you're coming. Invite a friend. All right, and then fast forwarding to next Sunday after church at 12.30 p.m., we're gonna do a membership class. If you're not yet a member, like a voting member, we're all part of the body of Christ. But if you're not yet a voting member, this is the time to check out what is Hillside all about and how do I sign up to be a closer part of this team? And so you'll come, you can explore it. You don't have to sign anything, but you can at least know what voting membership is about and how to get involved, and you're going to learn a lot more about Hillside. Uh, so that's next week. RSVP, please. Uh, there's Sarah's contact information is in the bulletin. That way we can have lunch for you as well, because it's going to be 1230, and we're going to be hungry. All right, so that's Sunday. And then let's go a little further out. First weekend in February, you know what's happening then? Ah, oh, men's retreat, men's conference, men's retreat. Yes, if you have not yet been to a men's retreat, um, then you probably haven't signed up. You don't know about this. It is great. Like if you've already been to a men's retreat, you're already signed up because these are great. You'll go, you're going to have fun and you're going to meet with God because God shows up in a way that for some reason he it's harder to break through the busyness when we're down here, but we're going to go to the Santa Cruz Mountains together. We're going to pull out and uh, we're going to meet with God together. And you're going to come back here and you're going to be way more connected with the guys at Hillside. Uh, so sign up for that. You can go to the welcome counter after church today and get more details and sign up for that. All right, that's the men's conference. Also, I uh, want to take a moment to give a, a thank you to Carolyn Moeller, uh, to Evan Cooley, and to Wes Cooley. Uh, these brothers and sisters are stepping up um, while we are looking for a new full-time worship leader. Uh, these volunteers are stepping into that. Uh, they're sacrificing their time, their efforts, energy. They're using their gifts to bless us. So let's give them a round of applause. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 
And let's, let's pray for them. Lord, we thank you for Evan and Carolyn and uh, Wes, Lord God. Thank you for uh, just inspiring them to say yes, Lord. And, and we thank you for uh, how you will use them. Uh, we ask that uh, you would bless them as they bless us, Lord God. We ask that you also just look after their families. This is a sacrifice to them and their families, Lord God. Just bless them, fill them up, Lord. Um, give them an extra measure of your goodness. Uh, we ask for your protection over them. And we just ask that, um, yeah, you would guide us as well in this search, but in the interim, however long that lasts, Lord, we're thankful for the gifts you have provided. Amen. All right, so be sure to thank them along the way. And if you ever have any feedback or questions about worship, talk to uh, Sierra Rubio. She's our staff contact. You can direct any questions or concerns to them. All right, we did it. Let's go on to the mixer. This is a chance for us to come face to face with each other and get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, the idea here is you're gonna stand up, you're going to try to find somebody that you didn't come with um, and introduce yourself, share your name, and then your answer to this question, what is the last play or concert or sporting event that you have attended? All right, so let's get up, find somebody, and answer that question. Um, if you'd have a seat, we're going to ask the ushers to come forward and take our morning offering this morning. Um, it is so great to, to be together and to hear all the laughter and the chatter and the friendships. Um, we want to pray for our offering as we take that today. Um, God, we thank you for the gifts you've given us, and we ask that you use this to bless our church here and in the world, um, we thank you for, for all that you've given us. In Jesus' name, amen. to the land and all who've gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your name is the greatest your
Father, that is what we do. That's what we've come to do this morning to praise You, our great God. You are great and deserving of our praise and adoration and attention, and that's what we give You right now. And we pray that Your heart is full because You're the audience of this worship service. Thanks for gathering us. We recognize You as the speaking God, the one who speaks to Your children because You love us. And so we pray that right now you would speak. We're ready to listen and respond uh, in faithful and joyful obedience. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can have a seat. Uh, good morning to you again. Really, really good to have you in the room. I know there's somebody here uh, who hasn't been here for a long time, a hillsider from the past, living in a different state. I won't single you out, but we're really, really glad that you are here. The first time I've never not singled somebody out, uh, but I'm learning. I've got a question for you. Uh, ever had the experience of learning a new word and then suddenly hearing it everywhere? You've had that experience. Um, just a few weeks ago, uh, at a family Christmas celebration, my teenage niece, Caroline, referred to somebody as having riz. And I said, I said, what? What did you just say? And she said, riz. It's short for charisma. And it means, you know, a kind of attractiveness or charm or appeal. She said, kind of like you and my dad, uncle, okay? I didn't believe her for a second, okay? She was gunning for a better Christmas gift. Uh, but regardless, I keep hearing Riz uh, everywhere. I even heard it uh, in the church office just a few days ago. And uh, it also happens with famous people that you learn about. Over Christmas break, uh, our family watched the fifth Indiana Jones movie. And the plot involves uh, an ancient Greek philosopher uh, called uh, Archimedes. And I had never heard of Archimedes uh, before that. And since then, I, I keep hearing about Archimedes, uh, keep hearing that name. And uh, uh, most recently in relation to kind of an interesting ancient discovery, kind of complex story, but here's a simple version. There is an ancient prayer book, uh, centuries old, that is now housed in a museum in Baltimore. and. Uh, when it was examined very, very carefully under a microscope in 1907, it was discovered that below the surface of the text, very faintly, are three long lost works by the ancient philosopher Archimedes. And uh, again, they had thought that these works were gone forever and they were very, very happy to find them. This was a huge find for historians and philosophers. And since then, I've learned the name for a text uh, written over another text or a picture painted over another picture. It's palimpsest, which I give to you for Jeopardy or for the GRE, if you're going to be taking it anytime soon. Now, why bring this up? Reason is the Bible is a palimpsest. The Bible is a picture over a picture. The Bible, God's Word, 66 inspired God-breathed books in which we, we go to over and over again, and in which we learn what's real and true and lasting, and in which we hear the voice of Jesus, our shepherd, uh, speaking to us, guiding us, giving us words of encouragement and love and wisdom. This book, and the New Testament in particular, is a palimpsest. It's a picture over a picture. And the picture above, of course, is the Creator God and Jesus our Lord and the Holy Spirit and the cross and salvation and the Christian life and the Christian family and the Christian future. That's the, the picture above. But what's the picture below? What do we see if we kind of scratch the parchment a little bit? Well, let's do this. Let's put some passages under the microscope. Look at your notes, if you would, and look at Titus chapter 2, verse 14. Listen to this verse. It says, Jesus gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people 
for his own possession who are zealous for good works. Great verse about who we are here at New Hillside as the family of God. We are a people uh, of God's own possession, eager to do good, eager to do good uh, with each other and eager to do good uh, in our world. But consider some of the key words from that simple verse and consider where we might first have heard them. Listen to Exodus chapter six, starting at six, verse six. This is God talking. He says, say therefore to the people of Israel, I am the Lord and I will bring you out from under the burdens of the Egyptians and I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with great acts of judgment. I will take you to be my people and I will be your God. Noticing some echoes there? I bet you are. Consider the book of Ephesians, chapter one, verses one through 14, which uh, you Kairos men uh, are in deep right now because you guys are studying Ephesians. Uh, you'll know that in that, those first 14 verses, Paul uh, starts out just in rapture. He extols the one true God. He extols the Father of Jesus, whom he says has chosen us. And he says he's adopted us as sons and redeemed us through blood, he says, and made known to us his will. And then he says he's given us an inheritance. And again, where have we heard that cluster of concepts? Where have we heard that? Exodus chapter four, 22, it says, the Lord refers to the nation of Israel as his firstborn son. Exodus 12, people of Israel are passed over and they're redeemed when they uh, smear the blood of a lamb on their doorpost, redeemed. Exodus 20 and following, the Lord gives his Torah to his people, his practical instruction reflecting his will for them. And then finally in Exodus 3, many other places in the book of Exodus, uh, the Lord promises to give his people a special land, uh, an inheritance. And again, bells should be sounding off in our minds, Exodus bells. And here's one more example. Take John chapter eight. Here, Jesus is in this intense discussion with Israel's religious leaders. And at one point, Jesus says something startling. He says that, that Abraham, rejoiced when given a vision of the coming Messiah centuries before he was born. Jesus says, uh, Abraham saw me. And the religious leaders who he's talking to uh, cannot believe what Jesus just says. And they, said, they say to him, you're not even 50 years old. How's that possible? To which Jesus replies in the ultimate, uh, drop the mic, moment. John 8 verse 58, he says, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Where have we heard that bombshell phrase before? Listen to Exodus chapter 3 verse 13. This is from the famous story of God speaking to Moses in the burning bush. Listen to it. Then Moses said to God, if I come to the people of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. That's the same Greek phrase Jesus uses of himself in John chapter eight, ego eimi, I am. I think you can see where this is going. The Bible, God's word, the New Testament in particular, it's a picture above a picture. And the picture above again is of the creator God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, God with us, the cross, salvation, the Christian life, the Christian family, the Christian future will so often, so often, over and over again, the, the faint picture, and sometimes not so faint picture, 
just below the surface is the Exodus. And the stories in the book of Exodus, they are everywhere, allusions, echoes, suggestions, images from the Exodus are everywhere throughout the Bible. They are throughout the Psalms. You just read the Psalms. I read a Psalm every day. Exodus imagery over and over again. They're all throughout Isaiah, especially the middle section. They're all throughout the Gospel of Mark, especially the very first chapter. Exodus reference, Exodus reference, Exodus reference. They're all throughout Hebrews. They're even throughout the last book of the Bible, Revelation. And if, again, if you just scratch the parchment of the Bible, and in particular the New Testament, over and over again, you find Exodus. And that means something for us. People who are followers of Jesus, uh, trying day by day to, to know his will and to represent him in the world, it means if we want to enrich our understanding of this remarkable book, again, in which uh, we know everything important to know, and in which we hear Jesus speaking to us, if we want to know that better, we are going to know and savor Exodus. We're going to know Exodus well. We're going to season our imaginations with Exodus. One writer puts the importance of Exodus for Bible people like us in a really striking way. Listen to what this guy says. He says, so central is the grand narrative of Exodus that the rest of the Bible is but commentary on this event. Probably a bit of an exaggeration. Uh, but the basic point is really good. Exodus is massive in the minds of the biblical writers. Exodus was massive in the mind of our Lord who did what? He chose Passover as the moment to fulfill his life mission, which was to die on the cross for the sins of the world. I don't wanna belabor the point, but we could put it this way. Here's a question. Who here has ever been in a play? Can be a community theater, uh, maybe a high school play. Keep your hands raised. Let's look around and see who the hillside drama kids are right now. Okay, look around. <laughs> That's good. Uh, well, you drama people will know this. Uh, a scrim uh, on a stage is a, a gauze curtain that looks uh, non-see-through until backlit in which case it becomes transparent, allowing the whole audience to see what's behind the curtain. Maybe you've seen that if you've, uh, you've ever been to a play maybe at uh, the Lesher Center. Well, what's the point? Reading the New Testament with a mind and a heart and imagination formed by the book of Exodus is like looking at that entire biblical stage with the scrim backlit. The whole picture opens up. The picture of the creator God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the cross, salvation, the Christian life, the Christian family, the Christian future. It all begins, gets bigger and brighter and it, it's, it gets new dimensions. It expands in color and depth. And most importantly, it allows us to live into God's purposes for us with just a little more sensitivity, a little more thoughtfulness. And here's maybe the best thing. Reading the New Testament with the Exodus, uh, with an Exodus formed imagination, knowing that story and being formed with it, more than anything, it helps us to love the God who is the center of that story, even more than we do now. And that's why for the next 10 weeks, right up until Easter, we're gonna be reliving the book of Exodus. And I'm really excited about it. What is the story of the book of Exodus? Very simply, the, the story of Exodus is the story of the formation of God's world rescuing people. That's basically the story. And it starts with these people in a horrible state. They, they couldn't be in a worse situation. They're in bondage in Egypt. And even though these people are the children of Abraham, the one uh, who's descendants are the one whom God has promised to give a, a spectacular land, flowing in milk and honey. And even though they're the ones uh, whom God has promised will be the ones uh, through whom God's love and God's power is transmitted throughout all creation. This amazing calling they've been giving, given. 
But despite all that, despite those promises, where are they? They are in bondage in Egypt. They're under the thumb of empire and this terrible, terrible tyrant. That's how the story of Exodus begins. But here's how it ends. It ends with those same people in bondage, sad sacks, distraught, sad, having been freed, liberated, and having been forged into this mission-ready family. It's an incredible story. And it will also end, and this is really interesting for us at this moment, it'll end with this family having built something beautiful together. And about that, as I shared at the annual meeting back in fall, I sense that the Lord is calling us here at New Hillside to build something beautiful together. And I, I, I mean that literally. God's calling us to build all sorts of things. I think he's calling us to build something literal, specifically to build up and to beautify our downstairs, the area where we do ministry to children. And to put it in language from just two weeks ago in the Arctic Influencer Sermon, to make that space much more refreshing for our kids. I think it's really, really important. So that when our kids come here, and God willing, we're gonna have a lot more kids here in the years that come. We've had more kids here in the last seven or eight months than we've had in a long time. And God willing, it's gonna be a river of kids <laughs> coming into Hillside, okay? But we want them, when they come into their space, to know that they are a priority for us. To know that they are really important to us. That they are not an afterthought for us at all. And that's for a particular reason. So that they can encounter Jesus through the children's ministry team, working in, in, in partnership with parents. And so they can grow up in Jesus. And so that over time, they can become flourishing trees. And I think that in addition to all, all sorts of other benefits that we're gonna get from this exploration of Exodus, I think there's the chance that God's Spirit is gonna to speak to us and guide us and give us some inspiration in this project if in fact he is leading in that direction because the Exodus story involves this mission family building something really beautiful together. But that's the Exodus story. It goes from a family that, that's sad and sorrowful and in bondage to one that's joyful and excited, even ecstatic and mission ready. All right, let's get a little more specific. What are we gonna get out of this series? What are we gonna get out of it? What can we expect from it? And you can feel free to remove that slide up there. We're gonna get a lot of things. But there are two things in particular first. We are gonna get a, a heightened sense of purpose. And that's your first fill-in. You got three today. A heightened sense of purpose. You see, we Jesus followers, we who belong to Jesus today, who know him as Lord and Savior, who are following him day by day, we stand in continuity with that family that we are gonna be reading about over the next 10 weeks. We're their spiritual descendants. They are our spiritual ancestors. That's exactly what Paul says in the book of 1 Corinthians 10, 1, listen to this. He says, for I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors, he's talking to us, our ancestors were all under the cloud and they all passed through the sea. Again, he's talking to us. Well, that family had a very particular purpose. God made them a family for a certain reason. It wasn't for no reason. And what was that purpose? A lot of different ways of characterizing it, but the one that we are gonna camp on in this series for the next 10 weeks is this. Their purpose, our purpose, was to bear God's name. There's your second fill-in. And that's why we've named this message series from Exodus, the rise of the name bearers. What does it mean to bear God's name? We actually sang about it in the second to last song, but what does that actually mean? It means that, that we exist as a family to spread knowledge of God and his son 
and his truth all around creation. That's why we exist. That's why God has put us together, to spread knowledge of him. And, and that begins with the people just a rock's throw away from us. Begins with our own neighborhood, Park Mead. Then it fans out to Civic Park, a significant place of ministry for New Hillside. And then it goes beyond that. But we are the people who are called to spread knowledge of God, his grace, his love, his truth. That's what it means to be a name bearer. And that, that name bearer, that's what name bearing means is really plain when you notice all the time throughout the book of Exodus that there are references to God's name. And if you read Exodus, which I'm gonna encourage you to do, you're gonna see references to God's name over and over and over again. God is constantly saying that my name might be known. Over and over again, he says, I am the Lord. I am Yahweh, it's everywhere, all right? But that name bearing purpose for this family of which we are a part, it, it, it's also made plain in kind of an interesting way, something I learned when I was preparing for this series. It's all baked into the third commandment. Look at your notes. Look at the third commandment, it's Exodus 27. And this is a, a commandment maybe you haven't thought a whole lot about. Maybe it's that kind of a thin meaning for you, but listen to what it says. It says, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Now this is very interesting. Hebrew word translated take there more ordinarily means to lift or to carry or to bear. And thus, the broader meaning of this commandment, you know, it includes not misusing the name of the Lord for sure. It's a lot more than that. The, the broader meaning of that commandment is to live this name or to put it the other way around, to not wear the, 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 the God uniform, as it were, and to not, but to not get into the game. So it means to be a name bearer. And so in this series, we're gonna to come to a deeper understanding of our purpose. That's why we're here. We're God's missionary people. And because Israel was God's name-bearing family, that's who we are. So that's the first thing we're gonna get out of this series. We're gonna get a heightened sense of purpose. We're gonna get exhilarated by what God has called us to do. But we're gonna get something else as well. And I'm really intrigued by this. We're going to get an exhilarating sense of the possible through this series. I know this. You see, if we allow God's Spirit to imprint Exodus on our hearts, to, 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 to form our imaginations with Exodus, the story just below the story, we're gonna be left with a huge new sense of the possible. What's possible here in our church? What's possible in our own lives? And that's because King Jesus, the eternal son, with whom we are in the closest possible relationship, the one who's here now, the one who is inside us if we belong to him by faith, the one who, who, who hosts us and feeds us once a month in communion, feeding us. This Jesus is the God of the Exodus. We've already seen that, John chapter eight. Jesus identifying as the incarnation of this God when he says, I am. But the New Testament makes the link explicit. Listen to this. I wonder if you've ever seen this verse before. I had it marked in my Bible, but it never really penetrated the consciousness. But recently with my mind full of Exodus, it exploded for me in a new way. Listen to this verse. This is Jude verse five. He says, the inspired writer says, now I want you, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved a people out of the land of Egypt. <laughs> Stop right there. Jesus? Jesus saved Israel out of Egypt? Jesus, back in the 13th century, <laughs> rescued Israel out of Egypt? And Judah saying, Yes, Jesus the King, Jesus our friend, Jesus our Lord, Jesus my friend, Jesus your friend, the Jesus who's here now, the Jesus we know and love, the Jesus who whispers to us words of love and encouragement, that Jesus who's here now is the one who out of bottomless, depthless 
love rescued a people out of bondage in Egypt in brick factories. He's the one. He's the one putting them into a new place of honor and security and abundance. Now, is Jude saying that, that Jesus has somehow merged into the Father such that they're not distinct members of the Trinity? Of course not. They are distinct members of the Trinity. But his point, and other biblical writers make this point in different ways, Jesus was active as a member of the triune God in that event. Jesus, our Lord, the one who we know, the one who loves us. Well, what's that mean for us? It means something absolutely incredible. Jesus, being the eternal son of God, who never changes, who's always true to his character, still exodizes. <laughs> he still liberates people from bondage. He still lifts us out of dire straits that we find ourselves in. Why? Not for no reason, but so that we can love him and serve him and follow him more fully. So let me ask you a question. Do you need an exodus right now? Do you need some kind of exodus? Are you stuck? Are you trapped? Are you dealing with some kind of problem? You feel like there is no out to this. It feels metaphorically like you're in a brick factory and you can't get out, this is your moment. <laughs> this series is your moment to count on the Lord Jesus, who Jude says saved a people out of the land of Egypt to rescue you from your own Egypt. Whatever that might be, maybe it'll take time. You know, the first Exodus took time. We're gonna see the first Exodus stretches over 11 chapters. <laughs> I gave that, those 11 chapters to Becky. Uh, she's still thanking me. But it happened. It happened. Now if your brick factory is a serious illness, if it's MS, if it's Parkinson's, it is possible that maybe your exodus won't happen until Jesus appears to accomplish the ultimate exodus that Romans 8 talks about, when creation itself will be set free. That's exodus language. And given the freedom of the sons and daughters of God, that's possible. It's possible that your exodus, your full exodus won't happen until then. Who knows what God will do? Nevertheless, just think of the possibilities for life, the possibilities for our church, the possibilities everywhere <laughs> that Jesus, our Lord, who we know, who's close, he's even in us if we know him by faith, is the God of the Exodus. Think about the possibilities. Finally, how can we get the most out of the series? Nine more weeks ahead, how can we get the most? How can we go into this with intention so that at the end we've been deepened? We've been better formed as Jesus followers. Look at your notes again. I have these at the very end. Here's what we can do. First of all, we can come to church every week ready to relive the story. In these messages, we're gonna be telling these stories. We're not hiding the stories. Come and be ready to relive these stories. And if you miss, and we all miss from time to time, certainly, listen online, stay on track. Second, we can read the book of Exodus on our own. We're dealing with Exodus for 10 weeks, but there's a lot more than we can even cover. Read Exodus on your own. The bulletin has a reading plan. Some of the, 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 the reading uh, amounts for the week are a little bit long. Just break it up day by day, it's not too much. You, you'll get a fuller understanding and appreciation of the story. Your bulletin contains a reading plan. And as you read it, read it prayerfully. Read it with expectation. Read it that God's Spirit will open your eyes to how these stories, this true event pictures ultimate spiritual reality. Who God is, who Jesus is. What's the point of the Christian life? What's our future? What does it mean to belong to God? And if you read with kids, and I encourage you to do that, and we have sections that are sort of kid appropriate, read it with them. You know, during COVID, when we were at home with the kids a lot, we spent time as a family reading Exodus. Our kids, ah, oh, they loved it. This is a tremendous story, and it gave us all sorts of opportunities to talk about what 
what it means, what actually happened, and how it pictures what came true in Jesus the Lord. So read it with your kids. Third, do the companion study. Again, Peter Turry created another outstanding companion study. It's excellent. I mean, it's really, really good. And I encourage you, use it for your own personal devotions or use it as a group. And if you know, you're know you here at Hillside and you're a spiritual investigator, you're here because somebody invited you and you are just trying to learn more about who this Jesus is and what the Christian life is, I encourage you, do this study. Exodus is actually a very good on-ramp into the whole of, uh, of Christian truth. And here's the last one. To get the most out of this series, live the purpose of Exodus and seize any opportunity God gives you to bear his name. Be ready. That's who you are. We're name bearers. Again, Exodus is the story of the rise of the name bearers. So let's expect that God's spirit is gonna give us opportunities to bear his name, to share something about him with somebody. You know, last week over coffee, I got together with a hillside leader and this leader told me that he and his wife are meeting every week with two uh, spiritual investigators that they know, they developed a relationship with, and they're reading the Gospel of Luke with these two. These two are people that they've developed a friendship with, they have credibility with over uh, a fair amount of time, and they've initiated spiritual discussion, and they've, they've invited them into their house, and they said, let's read Luke together. I mean, what a better way to share the gospel than to read the gospel with, spirit, with, with friends? Who knows what God can do? In fact, let's pray for them right now, along with anybody else who's seeking to be a name bearer. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these two hillsiders living out their calling as your name bearers. And Holy Spirit, we pray that as they read Luke with these friends, they have them in their home, that you would do what you do. You'd open up their hearts to believe. Other people are, are bearing names as well. Empower their efforts so that faith can spring up. Amen. Here's how we're gonna close this morning. Uh, Zoe Garcia, a member of our worship team, is gonna sing a song for us. It's a really wonderful, wonderful song. It's called Names. And if you listen to the words, you'll notice it's a song that's a song of praise to Jesus, the God of Exodus. Now listen to some of these words. You are the medicine, the only cure for everything I feel within. Redeeming. Where have we heard that? Redeeming what was lost and all that could have been. Oh, this is a healing kind of love. You are the truest friend. Staying through the night when I was at my end, comforting my heart till it was light again. Oh, this is a faithful kind of love. This is a song of praise to Jesus our Lord, the eternal Son, Son of the Father, who's also the God of the Exodus. And as she sings, here's what I want you to do. Let the music wash over you. Let, let her, let the team minister to you in music. And then what you do, and what I'm gonna do, let's go to the king. He's right here. Let's take this moment to be silent before him. And then, and let's talk to him. And a couple of things we could do, we could say, Lord Jesus, how do you want me to enter into this series? I don't wanna miss it. You've provided this for me. How do I enter into it? Or maybe you pray, Lord, I, 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 wanna, I wanna be true to my calling as a name bearer. Is there somebody who I should be sharing with? Is there a new relationship I should be developing? Uh, or, or maybe you're thinking right now, I can't even think about that because I am in the brick factory. I am in a time of terrible bondage. I desperately need rescue and liberation. I need a way out. Lord, give it to me. Maybe that's what you pray about. You pray to Jesus who loves you. You pray for rescue, redemption, liberation, freedom the path forward, okay? And then when we've had a little time to be with our king, uh, Zoe and team will invite us to join them for the rest of the song. Let's go to the king. You are the medicine The only cure for everything I lost in all that could have been Oh, this 
Thank you for this rich time with you. Thanks for a fresh opportunity to be together, to be in your word, and to consider what you're 
saying to us, thank you for the honored commission you've given us. You, you brought us into your family by sheer grace, and now you've given us this wonderful opportunity to bear your name to a groaning creation together as a family. Thank you. We're looking forward to all that we're going to learn as we go through Exodus. We love you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, don't forget, there will be prayer ministers here ready to pray for you. Please come up and let them minister to you. They would love to do that. It'll be great to see you out in the light lounge for some hangout time. And here's your benediction. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. See you on the light lounge for some hangout time.